Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into the world of gardening fitness. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or you're doing gardening for the first time, it's crucial for you to enjoy the fruits of your labor without any aches or pain. In this video, I'll guide you through a series of simple and effective exercises to warm your body up and your muscles, boosting flexibility and strengthening key areas of your body. From dynamic stretches to targeted strength exercises, my goal is to help you prepare for hours of gardening bliss while minimizing the risk of those unwanted aches and injuries. A few things to do to prep yourself before gardening. First of all, pace yourself. If you have a big garden and there is a lot to do, then try and pace out the work throughout the day or over a period of a couple of days. Take regular breaks from the same movement or the same position and keep hydrated throughout the day. Secondly, correct lifting. Ensure that if you have large pots or heavy equipment, lift appropriately through your legs and get help if needed. Utilize equipment on wheels to help carry transport, heavy equipment from one side to the other and get help. Thirdly, safety first. Ensure that you have enough working space and avoid leaving things that can cause a tripping hazard for you. Allow sufficient space in your passageway and lastly, protect your legs. Use your knee pads or folded blanket to protect your knees if you will be kneeling for a period of time. If you have knee issues, try and avoid kneeling for more than 15 minutes and try and work on a higher worktop if you can. Get a low stool to avoid kneeling as possible and if you have to kneel, use a padding and a rolled up towel behind your knees. Use the right equipment and make sure your cutting and trimming handheld devices are easy to use and does not provide any extra added resistance that can cause an increase in strain on your wrists and hands. Wear protective gear, hand gear, gloves, sunscreen and hat and keep hydrated if in the sun. Exercise before and after. Do the following exercises before gardening to prep your body and after to release any tension that might have built up throughout the day. Exercises that we're going to do are split into two sections. The first is a general warm-up routine that you can do a couple of days before and after gardening. And the second bit is strengthening routine that ideally is started a couple of weeks before your gardening season and progress across the weeks with adding some resistance through weights or your own body weight and continue after the season is over. So the first routine is going to be to mobilize your body and we're going to open up our shoulders, our posture, our muscles, our hips, everything all at once. Anything that doesn't feel comfortable, please do not push into pain. As always, keep yourself nice and safe. So you need either a mat or you can be on a carpet. You can even just do it in the garden itself, standing up. But the ones that we'll be doing on the knees and lying on your back, ideally you'll have some kind of padding. So just make sure that you have some kind of towel or padding then on a hard surface. In addition, you'll also need for the first part, a towel or a rolled up blanket or else a foam roller just to open up that upper back which is an exercise I like doing a lot but it's really good to open up the upper back to remove any stiffness to begin with. So put the towel a little bit away you'll only need it when we get onto your back so starting off you're going to be slightly shifted away from the middle because we're going to then get ourselves onto our hands and knees but starting off we're going to take a little bit of a shoulder roll so starting off with your shoulders first getting that openness through the shoulder make sure your feet are underneath your hips and just take a few rolls backwards to open up through the front of your chest and then roll them forwards very good and then once you've done that keep one shoulder roll back to finish then roll your chin down to chest and lift up to ceiling so again we're getting your spine to just warm up a little bit and then stop in the center and just rotate your head to one one side and then rotate to the other side do a little bit of neck rotation and then stop in the middle and we're going to get your arms to mobilize a bit more, taking your arms out. So we're going to rotate the hands out, then take them up and behind our heads and then come back and rotate in and rotate out behind your head, down, rotate in. 
getting a little bit of that rotation through your shoulder joint and the rest of the tissues in your arms which will work quite a bit when you are gardening so again we're getting that movement through the elbows through the shoulders through the arms and fingertips lengthening through the fingertips and then last one then we're going to take one arm each but this time we're going to rotate the arm palm come as if it's going to go closer to the ear and then rotate back down and rotate in so this will help mobilize our nerve tissue in our arms to remove any tightness and help us reduce any risk of injuries through tightness through the nerve tissue and again we're mobilizing the wrist and the fingertips to get them ready for those long hours of gardening and then the other way we rotate the hands we bring the hands to your ear rotate again rotate in rotate hand to ear down and rotate rotate hand to ear down and rotate three two and last one very good and then you want to do a little bit more stretch for your wrist you bring your wrist into a stretch palms facing up and then you rotate it palms facing down again getting a little bit of a pull through the fingertips and into the wrists so you really make sure the muscles in around that wrist don't pull and you avoid risk of injury of getting any tennis elbow or a um, uh, golf race elbow on the side of your elbow. Just those tendon problems that tend to come from overuse and especially through tightness of your muscles as well. And then you do the opposite way. And our palms in. So again, palms up, stretching the front and the back of your forearm. Three, two, and one very good and then just give your wrists a little bit of a roll well done so now we're going to get a little bit more movement through the hips and the ankles and the knees so again because we do a little bit of side movement when you're gardening side to side we're going to take a little bit of a side lunge getting a little bit of a stretch onto the side of the hip and then we take it back in so focus on one side first you don't need to go far down into that hip it's just a little bit of a step to the side so you can either go low or you can just take a step to the side and then come back. So whatever feels comfortable for you. Take three more steps to the side or else if you want to push it a little bit, you can bend down into that side lunge properly. Last one. Very good. And now take a little bit of movement to the side. We do the opposite leg. So we go to the side, either bend through the knee when you're bending through the hip and knee, just make sure you drive your weight back to get that stretch into the inner thigh. Again, we're doing some movement into that leg to get that movement, side movement going on. Last one. So you're aiming about six to eight repetitions of each one. Bring your feet together. We're gonna bend through the knees, tailbone pointing down, so don't let that lower back arch. We're gonna lengthen to the side of our waist. So we're gonna open up that side of our waist and then come back lengthen the other way and then come back lengthen the other way and then come back very good four and then come back three and then come back two and then come back last one very good and then roll your shoulders back and we're going to take a step towards the end of your mat and we're going to get ourselves rolled down on our hands and knees and next bit so we're going to take a breath and reach your arms up breathe out roll chin to chest and we're going to roll down nice and slow get onto your hands and knees if you can and whilst you're in that position you can also do a little bit of a stretch into your ankles so you're starting off with your toes curled underneath you you push back weight onto your heels and then come back and you can uncurl them as well so we're going to spend quite a bit of time if you do gardening on your hands and knees that you want to make sure that you're comfortable in this position if you have knee issues and you cannot bend that far back again padding underneath the knees and you can create some space by rolling a towel and placing it in the back of your knee and you can go back and release again this is some modification that you can also have whilst you're kneeling and gardening at the same time so again just make sure it's quite tugged in and you just go backwards and forwards 
and then instead of going back we're going to go shifting forward again putting some weight through those wrists getting them to stretch a little bit into that direction very good two more last one and then the next one is going to be a little bit of a rotation tread the needle so bring your hand across towards the opposite side and then lift up towards the ceiling take that rotation through the chest and again reach opposite side take that rotation up towards the ceiling and again one more time and then reach up the ceiling drop it down we do the opposite so again we reach we lift up we reach we lift up one more time we lift up very good and then drop back down we're going to lift ourselves up into kneeling and we're going to do a bit of stretching here into kneeling so if you're gardening especially on your knees you're going to be doing some of these movements quite often so it's important that you would do these as a warm-up as well so you're going to bring one leg in front like a kneeling lunge and you're going to take a little bit of movement forwards and backwards you don't need to sustain your stretch all you want to do is go forwards and backwards again any knee issues put padding underneath the knees and just make sure you're not pushing into sharp pain and rather than just staying in this straight direction you want to then open the hip the knee slightly out to the side and going in that direction putting a little bit more pressure through the side if this doesn't feel comfortable you can skip it all together so you don't need to be doing this all in succession if some of the exercises are uncomfortable you can also do this a little bit in standing if you wish so it'd be similar in standing you go forwards you're stretching more your calf rather than your hip but you can also be doing side kind of lunges as well so again, just switch over whichever position that you're comfortable in. You're going to be moving forwards and backwards, just opening that hip up. And if you're doing it after a day of gardening, it's a really good one to open up any stiffness that you might have gathered during the day. And again, you open up this hip to the side. very good and then from that position we're going to turn around onto our back and we're going to bring in that rolled up towel to open up the upper back so any stiffness in your upper back this would really help lower yourself down place it across your upper back hands underneath your head bring feet closer to your bottom and just simply roll over it and then come back roll over and then come back roll over and then come back roll over and then come back and again you can move yourself slightly higher and just do the same thing think of six to eight repetition on every movement just getting that upper back to open up and then once you've done this you can pop yourself slightly up and you're gonna lie completely onto the floor and do two more stretches one is going to be open up your hip so we're going to do your bridging but the bridge goes flat in that back squeeze your bottom and just lift 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 your hips so the bridge is a movement exercise but it's also a strengthening one You're really trying to squeeze your bottom and open the front of your hips and then draw back down from the top of your spine middle of your spine and then your bottom Again, breathing out, flatten that back, squeeze your bottom, lift, drive your, drive your knees away from your hips, lift as high as you can, and then come back down. Ribs, middle of your back, and then your bottom. Last one, we press, we lift, driving knees away from your hips, really open up those hips, and then drop back down. And then once you're done, you can pull knees to chest and finish off with a nice tie hug stretch towards your chest. And then to come back up, we're gonna drop your feet down onto the floor. We're gonna rotate to the side and then lift yourself back up nice and slow. The other two things that you can do if you really wanted or feel a little bit of tightness, you can stretch your quads 
and your hamstrings you can do this in standing as well you can use the chair if you wish so you can bring in the chair which we will now use in your strengthening bit and if you want to stretch your quad you can simply just pull one leg up ideally you'll be holding and you pull the leg up if you cannot reach for the leg you can hold the leg onto the chair and just squeeze your bottom and try and stretch that front of your hip and your thigh this is really important to just stretch your thigh and the other one is to stretch your hamstrings which is leg in front of you lift your foot up and just simply lean forward as far as you can and you can either hold that position or go up and down getting a little bit more movement so if you feel like your hamstrings and your quads so your tie on the front and your tie in the back tend to be quite tight for you and they give you a little bit of an issue these might be two more exercises that you can add to your warm-up routine in each one if you're going to hold the stretch try and do like a 30 second hold and repeat it once or twice if you're just going to do the movement like this one where you're going to lean forward and lift back up try and do about six to eight repetitions nice and slow to get that easing off this one the last one with the hamstring is also really good if you suffer from sciatica which will ease off your symptoms and keep your symptoms quite low especially after a day of of uh, gardening which will help so those are your mobility exercises so i hopefully that would be a nice routine that you can do before and after your gardening you can do it anytime you can even keep doing it when you're not gardening but it's good to prep your body for when you think you're going to have these nice long days of sunshine where you're going to be doing lots of gardening the next bit is a couple of exercises which you can do after your warm-up but they're strengthening ones so they're they're exercises where they're going to repeat certain movements that you'll be doing throughout the day but get your body a little bit more stronger so you're going to need a chair for this just to help with certain movements and the first thing we're going to be doing is sitting down on the chair you might want to have some weights as well so the weights are there to just give you some more resistance the resistance is mostly to just and um, if you started out without using any resistance and you feel like they're getting easier you can add some weight to get you getting stronger and stronger so it's like a progression making it a little bit harder so weights wise these are about a kilo each not much you can have bottles of water and you can have and um, other lighter weights if you wish so whatever you want or cans of beans whatever you have around the house but you can keep them on the floor for now and we're going to take a sit on the chair and for this one we're going to work on our posture so if you're going to be sitting when you're gardening or kneeling this is going to just try and help you open up that posture when you are in that position so all i want you to do is lean ever so slightly onto your um, thighs and in this position rather than slouching down what i want you to do is think of pressing up lifting that chest lifting that head and neck and lifting as high as you can and then as you're there you're going to hold the breath and then breathe out and simply just relax so from the side i'm just going to give you a side view of this what we're looking at is trying to keep feet on the floor you come a little bit away from the chair lean your forearm on, on, forearms onto your thighs press down onto the thighs if you want to come closer with the hands you can as well and just lengthen that chest a little bit more forward tailbone in that diagonal position shoulder blades back lift the head and neck and just hold that position think of a rod running through the back of your spine and you're going to hold it there for take a breath in and then breathe out and release so again, you start in a, like a rounded position and you're going to press onto the thighs, lengthen through the chest, shoulders back, tuck a little bit that tailbone under so you don't overarch that back, squeeze through the shoulder blades, lift your head and neck and just keep holding that posture for a breath and then relax. So again, we're lengthening up, we're holding that position, take a breath and breathe out relax one more time we press we lengthen and lift and release and repeat this exercise about 12 to 15 repetitions or even less if you find that you start getting a little bit more aches and pains anywhere else or you're losing form or you're not exactly doing the exercise well you can also do it in front of the mirror just to check a little bit your posture so again you're wanting to lengthen up and away 
The next bit is I've already told you the weights are on the floor. This is a little bit of a trick there. So put weights onto the floor and what we're going to do is you're going to reach sideways for them, bring in the weight and then pick it back up. So this is one of your strengthening exercises. We're going to reach down, drop the weight and then pull it back up. Reach down using one side, pull it back up. Reach down, pull it back up. And this is to use the side of your trunk and your core to get you stronger in this position. And again, put the weight onto the other side and you're gonna use the opposite side. Reaching down, pull it back up. Reaching down, pull it back up. If you feel bending down, you don't even have that range, you can also just put it a little bit higher onto another chair, reach, and then pull it back up. If again, weight is a little bit too much, do it without the weight. You can, the aim is to reach sideways for something and then coming back. So this can be your modification, making it easier, reaching sideways and bring it back. Reaching sideways and bring it back. You want to keep the weight and the pressure of the pelvis on either side of your bottom still touching the chair so we're reaching so we're not lifting up to compensate we're keeping that bottom down we reach and then come back now whether this is at up here or it is down there with or without the weight it doesn't matter that's your progression but it's just side reaching and then coming back okay so you do that on the same on on the same side and the opposite side for about 12 to 15 repetitions within your comfort next bit is a weighted squat so this is a chair squat so you're still on the chair you can grab your weights and for this one we're going to bring our feet parallel to almost like the the legs of the chair hold your weights closer to your body you're going to lean forwards and then press and lift now i've lifted myself up quite away from the chair you can start quite inwards so that doesn't matter you're going to go forward squeeze and lift down and lower forward squeeze and lift down lower forward squeeze and lift down lower and again forward squeeze and lift down and back last one down and down very good so it's another exercise to get your legs quite strong to get you up and down all the time which is something you're going to be doing a lot throughout your day and the last one is like a mini lunge reach kind of thing so again you can use the weight or not i would use the chair just as a little bit of a support if you need to so we're going to be doing, a, while during the day, you're going to be doing a lot of bending down, lifting and reaching for things. So you want to try and exercise into that. So you're going to keep one leg forwards, one leg back, almost into like a diagonal position. Hold your hand onto the chair if you need to. You don't necessarily need to if you don't want to. And then grab a weight or no weight. It's entirely up to you. But the movement is you're going to bend through the knees almost like a mini lunge. So you're going to lift the heel of the back leg. You're going to come down. You're going to drop the weight. Come back up. Down. You're going to pick up the weight. Come back up. So it's a mini lunge with a little bit of separation through those legs. Mini lunge. Go down. Push through the legs. Lift you up. Mini lunge. Go down. Push through the legs. Lift you up. Last one. So again, progression. You can be coming away from the chair and you repeat the same thing use the opposite hand if you need to to hold onto the tie and push yourself back up and without the weight as well so a progression is having the weight you can do the exercise without the weight completely if you wish so starting off would be with the chair without the chair and then with the weight okay so you do that on either side a repetition again of about 12 to 15 reps to get your body again some people will reach that fatigue level a little bit quicker so don't feel you have to so last exercise is going to be a hinge position so i'm going to show you in standing and then in kneeling and ideally you do both so in standing your feet are hip distance apart knees are soft hips are slightly soft 
keeping that back nice and straight and we've done the hinge in previous um, videos as well hands across your chest and I want you to think of bending through the hips without arching the spine so you're going to take a breath in and as you breathe out you're going to lower that chest and then hold that position getting parallel to the floor and then press and lift and again breathing in breathing out we lower and then come back up and again breathing in breathing out we lower and then come back up so that's your standing hinge and your kneeling hinge again you're going to be onto the knees and instead of bending back i want you to just bend forwards into that slide bend through the um, chest and then coming back up but keeping that chest upright so sometimes if this is a little bit too much for you you can bring your leg forwards and do like a half kneeling and again you're going to lean forwards and then squeeze lift back up lean forwards squeeze lift back up so most of the time you can be in this position with a slight rotation it's okay you can be also facing forwards trying to keep that back nice and straight and really getting that squeeze through the bottom to lift you up so if this is a little bit too much when you're leaning down slight bend but not a lot and then squeezing back up really using those hips to try and lift you up rather than through the back and don't bend through the chest. So you really want to keep that openness through the chest. You're leaning and then coming back. Leaning and then coming back, which is again another progression. So easier version would be in standing, then go into lunge, and then lastly would be onto your knees. But all of these exercises will really prep your body to be a bit stronger when you head to do your gardening. So those were your exercises. The first bit was a warm up routine where you open up your body that you can do before and after your gardening. And this last section would, was more about strengthening. That is ideally done about a couple of weeks before you actually do most of your gardening. So just in the lead up to the nice spring summer season where you do most of your gardening. If you have any questions, please do let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and comment down in below the video for any questions that you might have. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.